Welcome to Downtown Variety Take 7. I'm your host, Maddie Barber Bockelman, and this is Downtown Variety. Um, Downtown Variety is La Mama and Culture Hub's ongoing experiment, exploring how we can make art and support artists and feel each other from all of our little boxes. Um, this is our seventh edition. And I'm feeling grateful that we uh, decided to number them early on because I'm losing track of how to track time. Um, so this is the seventh and every week, while it doesn't come without its you know, frustrations and difficulties, we are learning and learn, learning new things about the software and about the performance capabilities. And we're meeting new artists who are approaching this with such excitement and are unearthing new possibilities and asking new questions. And it's really exciting. Um, Downtown Variety was, yes, born out of this extreme moment where our cultural spaces had to shut down and programming could only move online, but it goes deeper than that. It comes from La Mama's legacy of going all over the world and bringing new faces, unfamiliar dances, and stories unknown and giving them a home on East 4th Street. That's what we're trying to do here, giving these artists a home by bringing them to your home and to mine. And La Mama artists have always been affected by the venues in which they played. Um, in the early days in a basement on East 9th Street, it was there was a slew of plays that were all based around a bed because they had a bed for a while as a set piece. And when La Mama moved to East 4th Street and got the annex, Trojan Women was born and many, many massive moving productions followed as artists asked, what can we do here? Um, so we're asking the same question, what can we do with this container, um, this window to another world? So yeah, this week we're exploring with six different live artists who are going to perform live from Brooklyn, California, upstate New York, Boston, and Austin, Texas with video art by Jerusalem by way of Berlin. And this time four of these performances are duets. And so many of the pieces are exploring relationships. How can we relate and connect through these frames? So we're going into people's bedrooms, hallways, stairwells, living rooms, reading nooks, and makeshift offices tonight. And I'll be with you from my bedroom to yours or to your kitchen counter or curled up on your couch or on your dinner table. And uh, yes. Hello. It's nice to see you here. So uh, all of this is happening. Wait, allow me. All of this is happening through Live Lab, which is an experimental software that Culture Hub has been developing over the past five years for networked collaboration between artists, audiences, and technologists. So first, we've got a performance from somebody who is close to my heart, a Brooklyn-based artist working remotely with a collaborator across the country. This is Joseph Brock. Standing at the top of this chair, my own to get rid of them. Where are your demons? I looked out beyond the house. Do you even know? Beyond the cars, beyond the old crack house my dad sure. told me. And there was a big place in it. Dark, dark, dark. Standing, but I felt it. So loosely, I felt its presence and its gaze upon me. I did not curse me. Be all I could. 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 Be all I
Be. 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 And it listened. It was a deal. And as soon as it did, it reappeared closer. Be. And closer it came. I don't think you wouldn't be here right now. Moving ever and ever close. Leave. Be gone. I have nothing you want. You have nothing I need. Just go. Do you I am done with you. But he kept coming. I called for help. Search. But there was no one. I tried to run. Are you completely? But there was nowhere to go. I tried reasoning with it. Look. Look, if, if you leave, I will give you whatever you need, whatever you want. Just take it. Just, just let me be. Just let me be. My desire to control me. To manipulate and lust. I hide them really well, but when I master that, did my drive be gone? Every time I try to get my port, of one for all, I see it outside of my door. They come back again. They are coming, right? Please go. You are not welcome here. Again. I'll call the cops. My dad's the pastor. Just go. Yeah, but they call it a struggle. But it kept coming. It kept pushing into me. <sighs> to the bottom of the stairs. <laughs> started climbing in a way. It seemed Ever like closer. I have to wait for Solomon. <gasps> it was not going to be. I was going to have to talk to Give it a fight. I am going to give it a fight. You will not take it. But I planted my feet in the ground. I felt the last bit of my stress arrive through my spine into my chest. And I puffed out. I knew what I needed to do. It came to me finally. I was trained for this. I'm the worst. I looked at it and I said, Leave me in the name of Jesus. Go! I'll stand. But it just stood there. Just stare. Listen. <laughs> I felt it laughing at me. Laughing at my spirit. I have to keep trying. Pressure. Be ever more. I have to keep trying. Go! I can't leave. Me. It just looked me what dead in my eyes. eyes. And it said, we are one. We are legion. We are legion. That was Joseph Brock coming at you live from Bushwick. And here he is, my friend. Here I am. What's up? I am doing good, incredibly hot, but good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, who are you wearing? I am wearing something me and my girlfriend made. This cloak, very Sith Lordy. Mm -hmm. And I, too, and... happen to be wearing something that your girlfriend, uh, by the name of Verna Estes, made for me. Hey, hey, here we are. <laughs> so Joseph, what's um mm -hmm. what's what's good? I can you tell us just a little bit about this piece and where it comes from? Yeah, it, it's been it was a piece that was originally an audio piece that had been stewing in my head for a long time. I made last year. It's based off of experience my dad had an outer body experience. I, I mentioned in the piece that he's a pastor. He had this outer body experience where he appeared at the top of our house peering out and he saw this thing that kept coming 
And it's, it really, it struck me as such a biblical story, even though something happened in this modern time. And I kind of took that idea of this thing coming. And the thing he would say is that it made it to his face. He kept telling it to go. It would leave. A new one would come. And it got to his face and it said, we are legion, meaning that each time he said one would go, another one would come and replace it all the way to his face. And that story always kind of struck me as how we grow. We always had something that were challenging us and some demon maybe or some thing, some vice um, that we're pushing through. And I decided to adapt that story for this purpose and adapt that idea of challenging, not trying to run because we can't run from ourselves and having to just challenge and having to push through and having to come to that realization that you got to just face this thing. What does we are legion mean? So we are legion, it comes from actually a, um, a story in the Bible where Jesus banished demons out of a man. And the demon said, we are legion because we are many. There was mm -hmm. many demons in this man. So he casted them into a, um, a group of pigs and the pigs drove off into and drowned in a river. Like Circe. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Um, yeah, so I figure we all have legions of things that we're trying to work on internally. Yeah. And yeah. legion of things outside of ourselves that we're having to ba do battle with. Yeah. And that's so why I was really pointing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I know your background is as mm -hmm. a classical bassist mm -hmm. from, from your youth. Um, <laughs> but I want to yeah. know what's, what, pushed you more in these experimental directions like I know that you have been experimenting a lot with um with painting and visual art but especially what's pushed been pushing you to experiment more with performance and the more theatrical stuff yeah well it, it was a slow journey I put down my instrument as soon as I graduated like literally the next day I'd never touched it again. And I went to school for music. So it had really been in my life since the third grade through graduating with a bachelor's degree in music performance. But I never knew, I, I, well, I knew it was never gonna be my life. I knew it wasn't really my passion. I didn't really care for it. It was just a means to an end. And I kind of took away from it and I decided to do visual work, visual arts. But there was something in the back of my mind that kept saying, you should take something from that experience that you've been imparted growing up with music and you should do something with it. So I slowly started to make audio work and then it kind of built into its own thing. And then it started creating video work and then it finally clicked and I kind of understood what I needed to do with it. I needed to create my own voice and use my instrument sometimes, use my voice sometimes. Yeah, I heard the instrument but, time for sure. Yeah, yeah. This this one has an instrument in yeah. it. Um, the doom, 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 doom. Mm -hmm. all of that is me playing on bass. Mm -hmm. And so I, when I finally realized that that's what the whole ordeal of me hating it, it 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 was meant to get me here, to be able to input it in this way. It clicked for me tremendously, and so that's what I've been doing for the last two three years now. Yeah, it's great. One of my favorite days in the past few years in New York was when me and Joseph and Verna went to MoMA PS1 and saw the Bruce Nauman exhibit, <laughs> which was the third time Joseph had seen it, I think. Yeah, and, he just and not the last. Just, yeah, yeah. Um, and, he was critical for me because, I mean, theater, audio, video work, visual work, I, to me, that's kind of what I felt was like the creative maximum, engaging mm -hmm. every sensibility to one purpose and using each medium um, to its fullest potential, but towards one philosophical goal, maybe. So exciting. And I mean, yeah. honestly, those are all mediums, but what you're doing here and what we're doing here is a whole new medium. And so I'm excited mm -hmm. to see what you come up with next. Me too, me too. Okay. Thank you, guys. Love you, Joseph. Love you too, Maddie. Bye. Bye. <laughs> uh, love horns. Um, okay. So tonight you're going to see some video art. 
and um, the first one is coming up next. The video artist is Nama Zarfati, and she is an animation director and animator originally from Jerusalem, who is now based in Berlin. So these works are from here. Let's go wherever she takes us. Alina Schroma. In order, we are now my Welcome. You are now entering the assessment system of the Happy English Test under the instruction of the Something Department of Education. Happy English Incorporated just launched this new educational assessment system for people who are preparing themselves to spark joy in their everyday English communications. A qualified Happy English speaker should be someone who keeps an unswerving faith of happiness is true, I am like a room without a roof, throughout their life. A certificate of Happy English speaker will be issued to you when you have successfully passed the test with a score above 200. The following test is designed to assess your communication and writing skills of on-campus Happy English. Each session has a different guideline. Please listen carefully before proceeding. Please now present your Happy English ID for verification. Place your Happy English Test ID card within the green box. Place your Happy English Test ID card within the green box. Welcome, Gary S.I.J.I.A. Wang. Get ready for the test now. Welcome. Oh, whoa. That's it. Get ready for the test now. Hi, Professor Adam. Read the sentence. My name out is out. Larry. My. Hi, Larry. How can I help you? You. I heard that you place students in internships for various university programs. Yes, I. you are right. I. Right. I assist I students in student with internships. In, uh, Internship at University Art Museum. Those position AM. at position position museum. Position are all yeah. unfortunate. On the website. On. The website is out of date. I want to do museum work after I graduate. I the library is looking for I, even volunteers. I am not interested in library work. I, the staff I, at library are planning an exhibition 
of I'm photograph. not sure that is what I want. I. I also have to warn you, you beforehand, beforehand that this is only a four week project on paper. But, but why don't you read the job description? Listen and repeat the sentences. Hi, I would like to join the more club. Listen and repeat the sentences. Wonderful. We have some great activities planned for this year. I have talked to some of my friends who are club members. I have talked to some of my friends. What did your friends tell you about the club? What did your friend tell you? They especially about enjoyed the club? club field trips last year. They especially enjoyed the club. So you field probably field know that we meet every Monday and Thursday. So you probably know. I volunteer to tutor some primary school students in math Thursday. on Mondays. I volunteer to tutor. I see you have a schedule conflict. I see you have a schedule conflict. Okay, if I only come on Thursdays. Is it okay if I only come on Thursdays? Is it possible to change your tutoring Is day? Is it possible to? change your the tutoring for the community service requirements for graduation and mondays are for math so i have you okay because even if you can only come once a week i think you will still enjoy the club right and this is the topic of medium right an essay to show what you know about the structure of the u.s government this is a good start you are off to a good start Next sentence. Keep writing. Interesting point. You sure know a lot about the U.S. government. U.S. government. Can you elaborate on that? Very accurate. This is great. This is great. Keep up the good work. Amazing. Keep it up. Unfortunately, you, you didn't pass the English test. Your score is below 200, and your energy during the test is we all impressed with positive, positive energy. energy. Although you we have passed the time and effort you invested in preparing for the HET, we are only able to issue the Happy English Speaker Certification to those certified parties. Happy English Speaker on campus has always been crucial to the English-speaking world. We want to make sure the Happy English Test System can help people to not the only speak good English, only speak English, 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 but speak happy English. English. Thank you for your participation. We, we wish you the best of luck and hope to see you smile more next time. We'd like you to bring us positive energy in the English speaking world. Oh no. <laughs> she didn't make it. Wow. I'm hey, I passed. <laughs> I know. Last time both of you passed and I was very happy, but when even just one person loses, it's uh kinda kinda dark. <laughs> Tong, how do you feel? It's just very stressful and depressing. <laughs> uh, so you guys just made this piece, right? Right. Yeah. So last week um, we were part of this event called Performer Jam. Uh, it was hosted by Culture Hub uh, and the adjacent online journal from NYU. Um, it, the idea, it, it's kind of like a performance hackathon for a day. So the idea is that we were given a prompt on Friday night and we were supposed to spend uh, the day of Saturday to come up with a performance and then perform it at night. Um, right. It was crazy, yeah. Yeah, and then you have so much going on in here. So what was happening? Like a couple people were asking, is this live? Like are the video, or all, is all the interactions that are happening live or are they recorded or what? Um, uh, we pre-produce the uh, beginning video and the ending video. So either so the beginning instructions and the path 
still videos are we pre-produced it, but during the process, we are really competing against each other to be a happy English speaker. Yeah, we it. use, um, yep. Go ahead. We use a, a speech recognition uh, program mm. to, to listen to what you say and determine whether you say something correctly uh, based on its standards. Um, and that's how we were scored. And where does this program come from? The, like um, it. um it's a uh i think it's a rap it's called p5 speech um mm. <laughs> it's a wrapper around google speech api got it um and yeah and i incorporated it into the program that i wrote cool and what what is a happy english test what is this what is this test where does it where does it come from so actually, with uh, the theme for last last week's so the theme for last week's performance jam was um, energy vampire, and and when <laughs> I was talking to um, Carrie, we suddenly think about a test that we both took when we come to the states for studies called TOEFL. So test of English as a foreign language. So actually, it's 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 an environment where you sit with like about like forty to fifty other testers and when it comes to the speaking section it's really a very chaotic environment because you have right. to while you're actually listening to other people speaking into their computer uh -huh. yeah. the, the the conversations from in our performance actually all come from actual total questions um yeah so it, it was yeah, it's a standardized test that every international student has to take before coming to the U.S. Uh, for college. Um, and also before that, we both spent years learning English. And sometimes we just wonder, um, what does it even mean to speak good English? And what does it mean to speak good American English? Is it the accent? Is it more than the accent? Uh, is it some kind of attitude, American attitude that you have to adopt? Um, so like this, this is the performance is kind of our way of addressing these questions. Crazy. And you, Carrie, I know from some of your other work has it sort of looks at the system and this like glossy exterior and very positive, optimistic um, and sort of shows the sinister darkness of that, of those systems. Right. I think, um, I don't think the systems are necessarily sinister. It's just because I don't know why I'm just really into these things that are, that look just pure positive and optimistic on the outside. Um, and they almost certainly have a darker side because nothing is pure happiness. Um, so I'm really into these things. It's um, for my other works, the, the dark, thing, the dark system, uh, is technology, technology. itself. Mm -hmm. uh, a happy English, um, the system is the idea of, I don't know, Americanness or American English. Um, like it seems like to a foreigner from the outside, it looks so, uh, nice and it's a land of opportunities of freedom. Uh, but when you, when you actually come here, like you start to notice these things that don't really work very well. Um, and that's kind of the idea. Yeah. Um, and then for every, for you watching at home, I just want to, you know, connect the dot that Tong Wu, who is this performer, Carrie Wang is here and Tong Wu is here and Tong is actually working with us on a daily basis, basically, to develop Live Lab. So she is one of the coders who is working on this software and is making all the changes when we're like, oh my God, this issue is happening again. Tong, she's one of these people that we call up and uh, she works closely with Olivia Jack, who's the lead developer. So it's great to have you here. Hooray. Thanks for showing up, y'all. Thank you, Maddie. Next time. And see you Monday, Tong. Bye. <laughs> Great. Um, okay, so next up, 
we have um, Rihanna McGavin, who is a poet performing live from Los Angeles, California. A sonnet for FaceTime. The phone rings like a flock of jays surprised out of an evergreen, and you become a quilt of daylight on the same device that hacks up spam and headlines. Now, my thumbprint smudges your chin's spectacle. Your laugh cups my ear through this hole in the fourth wall a magic lantern that spins code and flash, bringing you closer home with each pixel to say good morning, as if you're right here. Golden hour in my hand till I hang up, no, you hang up first, talking to you, to air. Tuesday starts, and the call goes blank. When I press my fingers against the screen, it's warm, but not as warm as you must be. Long Distance Song When the conductor scans my ticket, the valley's dry orchards may as well burst into almond cakes because I'm going to see my baby, my moonbeam, who recites the locations of my moles like a prayer, eyes closed, eyes tender, even on screen, grin lagging behind his laugh where he is most hours for me since the move, our calls the sundial in my day. The face that pressed against the back of my shoulders in college is small as a playing card on my phone now, handheld, a magic trick not nearly as good as how our heads rolling through our scrapbook of nights along my bronze bedposts oiled the metal to a new kind of gold, an arch in the middle where we had slept, where the shine had gathered most. For this, I'll take the train. And I'll love the seats designed to hide stains, love the kids who noodle around on their parents' laptops with the volume blasted so I can hear every chrome pop, love the loudspeaker that crinkles out to say my stop is coming, and he'll be there waiting to spin me around, sprung from my phone to the full shape of his body. Every time, I forget how it is to look up at him, his jaws slope. How his voice strums the air with no static between us without pinning my ear against that smart little window pane. For weeks I walk this way, waving at the empty streets, earbuds looped around my neck as a locket, or him on speaker perched on the spice rack as I crush garlic from its papers. Sometimes, to switch things up, I just hold it the old fashioned way, a princess. If I had a cord, I'd twirl it. This is how I know him now, my honey in the dial tone. Distance leaves me shy as a first date as though I don't already know him like a tulip bulb. This time tomorrow will be gone, spun back into the telephone poles stitched along the southern Pacific tracks, the wires against the sky black as his hair left on my pillow, the wires that carry our texts in blue balloons across California, his arms spun back into the fiber optic cables that run under the railroad, marked out by orange signs like creamsicle sticks, all the flavor sucked away. The trains, the wires, 
the cables and internet, a braid to pull us closer, the strings connecting our tin cans dependent on the maps of other men and cell phone plans to say good morning. If I acknowledge how much I miss him, literally a coral reef would grow from my stomach. I could do nothing but lie around and watch bright animal feelings swim through. We are very young and stupid, I know. How young? Just as the bushes and trees, dark as wine bottles, melted into jasmine and jacaranda, a white and baby purple confetti that veiled the campus, that was when we met, and I remember the smell embroidered through beach fog, then simmering thick over another May afternoon, and within this freshet of flowers was the perfume in the green sweater he'd lent me that first morning when I stole his favorite book while he was still asleep, so he'd have to call me back, but my phone rang before he noticed it was gone. The green sweater, a knitted green number I wore every day that week, trembling up hills to class, my legs raw that way over my hips the sweater falling with his particular musk the dormitory detergent a thin layer of tobacco and something else sweet and mysterious a technicolor note that whistled around corners which was revealed to be the remnants of a strawberry jewel pod banned three years ago now Someone said a jewel will never be as cool as a cigarette because when you see someone with a cigarette, it's clear they don't care if they die, which is cool. But with a jewel or other mediary nicotine device, it's clear that you're like nervous. However, I decided to stop picking at my lip after we kissed that I didn't want to peel into a void so bad, which is very cool. When we met, I had a fire ant bite on my inner thigh, ugly in all the ways that meant I was living, and then I was the sweat on his brow. How evil it felt to be gone half an hour, half a day. How I orbit my hunger. How I love the engines, cell service, Wi-Fi, these clouds of dust and data, miracles I don't want, would trade to be bewildered by his footsteps in the next room again. But here I'm pulling my suitcase off the train and I see him waving and already I'm watching him leave as I run across the platform to keep up as the machine pulls away in the window, your face getting smaller, but I'll keep shouting because I need to know if you miss me when I'm gone from the live wire of your chest are you more patient with strangers because you remember my hand dappling your shoulder each time do you learn this by heart again is it easier to fall asleep holding a pillow do you wait confused over who or what is wrapped around you or reaching for the silage how long do you sit with your warm laundry will you keep my shirt in its own corner grasping for my scent feral for the beloved my darling my perfect one, my mouth is bleeding and I can't remember why, but sometimes in the middle of my laps, I pretend I'm swimming across a great blue lake to you, each stroke a second until I'm yours again, make my body a device that annihilates time. Is it the same for you? Are you waiting for a life between us? Are you a computer counting days until somebody can touch you? Would you bear it all to hear my voice calling you back?
Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the inaugural stream of Boys with Brains. Boys with Brains. Boys with Brains. Um, today we are Boys with Bird Brains. We are going to be playing a little bit of the indie darling Hotoful Boyfriend Pigeon Dating Simulator. Very excited. So, um, the basic conceit of this game is that we are a human who is attending St. Pigeonations Institute for Birds. And uh, it is our uh, freshman year or sophomore year, early on in our tenure at St. Pigeonations, and we are getting to know our fellow birds um, mm -hmm. and, and getting to know them at, as friends and maybe a little bit more intimately if we'd like to. Um, so we are, uh, we're gonna hop into a part of the game where we are trying to seduce one of the most popular birds in school, um, who has a very interesting relationship with the school doctor. Um, so the really fun part, if you can see on our stream below us, the chat there is our Facebook chat. Um, this is basically a choose your own adventure visual novel. So we get to make some choices and uh, we're asking our Facebook viewers to help us make those choices. So we're gonna hop into the game and then um, we're gonna seduce some birds. Yeah, let's do it. All, All right. right, so this bird is our oh, best friend bird. This is not the bird we are seducing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it does, but uh, Dr. Iwamine is uh, pretty suspicious. Uh, be careful, okay? You go to the infirmary a lot, right? Has he ever done anything to you? No, but... Well, you're a girl, Pasto. I'm a little worried. That's true. I'll be careful. Ryota always has been one to overthink things. Anyway, can't keep you you waiting. Uh-uh, I wouldn't. Uh, excuse me. Huh? Yuya and the doctor are talking about something. Mm. Did you really think I hadn't noticed? You sure look like you woke up on the wrong side of the nest. What are you talking about? I shouldn't have to explain. You should know exactly what I'm talking about. I have told you never to touch my desk, haven't I? And what makes you think I ever have? 
This doesn't look too good. Uh, um. Pastel! There you are, mon ami. Pastel can back me up on this. Uh, we were in the courtyard together until a few minutes ago. She said she was going to the restroom, so I should go ahead. I only just got here. In other words, I haven't had time to go rifling through your stuff, doctor. Right, mon ami? Just what is going on here? It sounds like the doctor suspects Yuya of having searched his desk while he was out. I came straight from the classroom to here, so obviously Yuya is lying. I... Here it is, y'all. Right. That decision of do we want to go with I say I was with Yuya because he is a hot boy. He's the one we were trying to seduce, but he's obviously lying. Or do we want to say that we were uh, in the classroom, which is the truth, but also like shady, creepy doctor who like no one trusts and no one likes. Also, a weird thing like in like earlier in the gameplay. You do know that he has, like, some ridiculous medicine and pharmaceuticals in there. Yeah. So, like, what's up with the doctor? What is up with the doctor? Also, but what's up with Yuya? Fair. If there's something Fair. funky going on with the doctor, why is Yuya getting involved? Why is Yuya, you know, if Yuya's trying to, I don't know, like, bust the doctor for, for doing some wrongdoing, then that's one thing, but... Maybe he's not. I mean, we have no way of knowing. So, yeah. depends on which birdie you trust. We have two votes in the chat to lie and ally ourselves with Yuya, Ooh. which I think is a juicy right. choice. And I like, I mean, obviously EL knows it's fine, but uh, yeah, uh, they were they were the first and they were like, Yuya, do Yuya. Like, immediately, as soon as that came up, EL was like, Yuya. Done. <laughs> right. And so it's a question of it's a question of like knowing where the sometimes maybe knowing where the path goes, right? But also like a curiosity. Well, I don't think we've ever played through the game and, and allied with the doctor. I don't think we've done that yet. No, no, I don't think we have. So mysteries abound there for us. <laughs> yeah, the French is just <laughs> Nothing is more convincing of an argument than of than French spoken in a Texas accent. It's true. A Paris, true. Texas platter, which is something that you can get at Kirby Lane Cafe in Austin, Texas. <laughs> not sponsored. The stream is not sponsored. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and side with Yuya, unless yeah. unless anybody feels very strongly to the contrary. All right. Okay, so here we are. We're gonna we're gonna lie, and we're gonna say that we were with you, yeah. Let's do it. All right. Yeah, we're with you, yeah. I don't quite know what's going on, but I don't like the look on the doctor's face. Um, that's right. Yuya and I were having a sexy and luxurious sunbath in the courtyard up until a few minutes ago. Sexy and luxurious it was indeed. Well, Doctor. Very well. I shall have to wait for more solid evidence. Please. Do be careful. Of course, Doctor. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> if you want to know what happens next, or you want to know what happens if you side with the doctor, tune in later. Hey, y'all. Hello. Hey. <laughs> 
Wow, we really went with Yuya there, didn't we? We sure did. <laughs> sure did. <laughs> so what is next? Where do we go next? Where are the other corners of Bird uh, University? Oh, um, goodness. Yeah, OK. So we have how many? Four, five different people? We have, golly, we have, um, there's, uh, I think there are, yeah, I think there are five or six different tracks in terms of birds that you can date. There are also some birds who have storylines that don't involve you dating them. Um, <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> yeah, it gets a little dicey there for a second because there's all of these characters that are teachers and you're like, okay, wait a minute, is there, what I don't know how I feel about this ethically. Game. <laughs> yeah. How did yeah. you guys find it? Jess, um, you found it. I did. I found it. Um, I found it on Steam, which is yeah, one of those sort of like you host your video game there and people download and play it. Mm -hmm. um, and every year, Steam has a, a winter sale. They have a summer sale and a winter sale, and everything is like dramatically reduced in price. And so um, I usually go through during one of those sales, and I'll just I'll buy like five or six games that are all marked down to like two dollars. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you, your gamer friends, kind of. I mean, what's this? What's this? What's this collaboration for you guys? Because I know it's just probably a way to feel joyful with each other across distance. Because Jesse is in Austin, Texas. Dylan is in Boston, Massachusetts. So the Austin Boston connection. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm sure I, this is my assumption is that it just started out as you guys playing games together to hang out. Yeah. And how much. it developed from that. <laughs> yeah, it, it pretty much did. Um, so, uh, so we both were streaming individually. Um, so I, mm -hmm. I played a similar game to this called Dream Daddy, um, mm -hmm. a dad dating simulator, yeah. um, which is, uh, involves a lot more humans. Um, and so I, I streamed that a couple of years ago, and Dylan was somebody that tuned into the stream. And then when, the, um, mm -hmm. you know, when all of the, the coronavirus uh, quarantining began, um, streaming mm -hmm. sort of became a way for Dylan and myself and, and other friends that we know, too, um, to sort of connect with other people and also provide a little bit of levity and entertainment. So I started mm -hmm. streaming this. Dylan was streaming Dream Daddy on his own. And then Dylan was one of the people consistently in my chat while I was streaming. And it really was one of those things. It was an hour before I was going to go live. And I was like, hey, do you want to like, get in on this with me? And I was and like, yes. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> and it just it changed the dynamic, but but for the better, um, mm -hmm. because then it, it gave it really gives this sense of um, sort of the two of us hanging out with each other and then people who watch the stream and get to interact, it sort of feels like they're getting to be a part of, of our sort of our intimacy and our hangout. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But y'all got brains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah. Our, okay. So we, we, this was actually like a complete one-off comment. Um, during one of our game uh, playthroughs of this game, actually, uh -huh. um, and we we just like somehow we were like forgetting things, like being very bird brained, essentially, um, and they we're like, yeah, we're just you know boys with bird brains, it's fine. Um, and then whenever we, it just like kind of stuck of like, yeah, we're just because we're so smart, we're so educated, like. <laughs> Yeah. Jesse is actually Dr. O'Rear. Um, I also am like uh, formally formally theater trained. Um, so yeah, we're we're both very educated people, but we're also very like silly <laughs> um, and goofy and like to game and stuff together. So it's just kind of like a good marriage of the two of like yeah, we're we're boys with brains. And then let's also make it like a little bit bigger of like, you know, maybe whatever we do, like we're playing this game, it's boys with bird brains. Um, next thing, who knows, it's gonna be something. Um, I think, I, Jess, I'm gonna teach you how to shave, right? <laughs> that was an idea that we had. Um, yeah, yeah, for, so there'd be boys with bird brains. For gaming brain. content is to live stream Dylan teaching me how to shave. I, yeah. I've seen live stream somebody teaching someone else how to cut their bangs. So I think that's, so you got to market. 
Yeah. Boys with barber brains. Mm hmm. Nice. And then boys with daddy brains. That works mm -hmm. too. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And y'all normally stream on Twitch, mm -hmm. but today you got in touch with us and sort of were like, not today on this first day of May. So why not Twitch today? Yeah, so um, we were planning to use Twitch and then um, today um, the uh, the wor workers uh, at Amazon and a couple of other bigger companies like Target, um, Whole Foods, which is you know um, now a subsidiary of Amazon, um, are striking uh, in protest of unsafe working conditions um, and unfair labor laws and unfair pay. And Twitch is actually also a subsidiary company of Amazon, which we didn't know until this morning. Yeah. Um, and so I saw a tweet from somebody that said, you know, I would usually go live at this time, but I won't. Um, and so immediately the both of us were like, okay, what else, what is the other option? Because crossing the picket mm -hmm. line is not an option to us, especially in this particular moment. And it's so crazy to even think about playing a dating bird game on Twitch and like laughing and having a wonderful time as crossing the picket line. Like that's such an insane concept. But, you know, all of these were tied to companies and all these corporate shit. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. There's, of course, you know, there's even there's always an argument to be made, too, that to go from Twitch to Facebook, what kind of yeah. lateral, you know, moral move is that? Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, so that was like something that we were struggling with to try to figure out what is the best alternative, because it's, mm -hmm. you know, it becomes in a certain sense of lesser of two evils. Mm hmm conversation right but it was really important for us to be in solidarity with what was happening today hell yeah um, yeah. yeah and that's definitely gonna like kind of inform us of like future streaming and stuff like that of like are there different platforms that are more open sourced um things that are more values aligned for us so yeah. That yeah to do that and low-key high-key that's part of why we're developing live lab i mean a major point was just because we needed more of an artful environment with more customization and the ability to not have the little green highlight box around my face right now, like Zoom has. But it's also <laughs> because, you know, first of all, we don't, do we really wanna be throwing all this money at a corporation and we don't know their practices and, and it makes it not accessible to everybody in the world. So cool. Mm -hmm. Brains, yeah. brains, brains. And Dylan is a brain that I get to work with and we're basically working with right now because Dylan works at HowlRound up in Boston. So that's that's a joy. Oh yes, indeed. Cool. Well, Jesse, I hope to meet you uh, beyond the Bird University one day. I'm sure I will. Uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having us. Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. This is a blast. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah. So next up, we have a performance by Nick Demopoulos. But before he performs, um, he has built his own instrument. And uh, we want to have him show you around it a little bit so that it's not just um, coming at you out of nowhere. So Nick, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. You cool. Doing? You sound far away. I sound far away. Can you guys hear him? Sungman, can you hear him OK? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Talk loud. OK, I will. OK, so I'm going to SMOMID is a project that Nick's been working on. Um, Nick is a performer, a musician, and an instrument builder, and SMOMID only utilizes instruments he has designed and built to perform interactive computer music. The name is derived from an acronym of his primary instrument, String Modeling MIDI Device. So what's this thing? Can you show it to us? Sure. This is the instrument. Nice, gorgeous, very guitar-looking-ish. Yeah, so it's a guitar, it's uh, inspired by the guitar. And it's basically a way, it's kind of, it's interesting what you were just talking about with Jesse and Dylan, because it's the same, I feel like it's related. I, I wasn't happy with what was commercially available. 
So I went ahead and made my own instruments. And um, the beauty of this is it sends uh, messages in the language called MIDI, which is like a protocol language. And you can um, like, for example, control LEDs and you can, um, this video animation behind me is being driven by MIDI messages. And these LED displays are uh, driven by MIDI messages. So I just, you know, touch this instrument and interact with it like it's a real instrument, but there's no acoustic properties. I just kind of, you know, play it like an instrument, but I can play digital media with it. Rad. So, well, I guess without further ado then. Oh, cool. Okay. Thank you. 
we are strong, powerful, wise. Because we have to be, and no one else will be that for us. The first time Nia told me I was strong, powerful, wise, I was having a nervous breakdown in my bedroom, suffocated by my sheets, my tears, my snot. I couldn't take the onslaught anymore. Nia lifted my head, looked in my eyes and said, you are strong, you are powerful, you are wise. I repeated after her countless times and held on to her words for dear life. And I'm still breathing. <sighs> Strong, powerful, wise. We remind each other every day because as two black, lesbian women, we need to remember our strength, our power, our wisdom, as ancient as the world is and deep as her oceans, who resemble the darkness that created her. We love her energy. For that reason, those who fear her fear us and are doing all they can to destroy our love, destroy our lives. They even use us as weapons against each other because we're all here too. Black, lesbian, women, we are different. She's dark, I'm white. She's not masculine presenting, I am. She's younger than me by six years. She dances, I write. She lives in her body, me in my head. She comes from a living home. Life is broken, so what she tells me, I'm strong. Powerful, wise. She reminds me that I'm safe with her, within myself. But it's hard to remember. I'm strong, powerful, wise. And it feels like she's not on my side. But I'm not always on hers. Like when she told me she was followed in a thrift store, I replied, it's probably not that serious, probably not because you're dark skin. And then it happened again and again and again and again. And I can no longer ignore the fact I'm on the brighter side of her sheer depression. There are times when we take pictures at night, and for whatever reason, the flash isn't working. I don't have to wonder whether or not I'll show up in the frame. And she's often been the only dark-skinned black woman at a dance audition, looking around the room, knowing she doesn't stand a chance. But still she dances, giving her best joy when she is there. She will be seen. She isn't leaving. She is strong, powerful, wise. I still question our strength, our power, our wisdom. When people challenge me with their eyes, their postures, their tones of voice, and all I'm doing is wearing a tie and talking or talking and holding her hands and wanting to be part of this and not to mess up why she gets so upset she's asked because I'm not who they think I am. I'm not a man or trying to be one. I'm a black lesbian woman. I'm strong, powerful, wise, strong, powerful, wise, strong, powerful, wise, strong, powerful, wise. Holding hands, holding your gaze. I hear her voice. I listen to her words. Strong.
Nia and Nia, Ness, everybody. And Nia and Ness, can you come and come and using the phone instead of the computer actually? The phone. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm just gonna use a computer instead. Okay. Oh, you wanna mute that? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Can you hear us? Cool. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. What's up? How are you? Feeling is feeling good. Feeling is, you know. Yeah. As good as you can. Yeah. yeah. Felt good to perform though. Yeah. Yeah. Sit with yeah. you. <laughs> Man, it, it feels good to see you and feel you perform. And it's I mean, it's been so great to spend time with you both over the past, I guess it's just been like a day and a half, but it yes. feels yes. like, <laughs> like you know? Yeah, you know, it definitely does. It's, this has been a great experience. Yeah. I mean, so we, we were introduced to Nia and Ness um, through ReFest, our uh, festival that we did back in March. And it was when everything was shutting down and we made the call to just bring it as a live stream only. And we've had this intense experience in the downstairs at La Mama with these two dance. I mean, I say both of you are dancing and it's because Nia, or sorry, Ness, when you're when you're performing, I, I feel like you're rock stars, you know? <laughs> like el electric rock stars. And, awesome. and we, we met you then and, and so we, yeah, it's so cool. So, I mean, Tell us about who you are and and what you do. Well, we are Nia and Ness. <laughs> we are a performance art duo. We're based right now in Rosendale, New York. So we are not in the city with probably most of you. And we know it's really hard down there, especially right now. I mean, it's hard everywhere, but I feel like in the city, it's a whole nother beast. Yeah. So we're definitely sending all of our love out to all y'all in the five boroughs. We uh, create and perform work about our lives as an out black lesbian couple and also our identity as a couple and also our identities separately. Me as a dark skin, black, lesbian, feminine woman and Ness as a light skin, masculine presenting, feminine, I mean, woman. woman. Yeah. <laughs> My God, I can never think after we perform. Yeah, you're fine. Totally. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been great. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just so curious about like your journey. And I mean, we got such a tiny little window into how you guys work together. And I mean, when, when after we sort of would do a run through, you both, you know, you have so much to talk about, just the two of you. And I just want to know like about how that, how that relationship has developed over time, because I imagine it started as a, a falling in love relationship and a intimate relationship. And how did it turn into this artistic creative relationship? Well, ironically. Or like, am I wrong? Our, I feel like our relationship has always been super intense. Like yeah, the, from the beginning, been. like it yeah. just like we were, we're very stereotypically lesbian. So we definitely like you hauled the yeah, first we day <laughs> we met in person pretty much. We moved in together and that was after like meeting two days like online two yeah. days before that so yeah and even with our art like, yeah the first night we were together Nia had written a poem and I recited it like I read it and she danced to it so it kind of was all oh damn yeah yeah I mean we didn't know that it was going to be this yeah though. um but yeah that just kind of I guess a year later um, that happened, uh, the student dance concert. Mm -hmm. um, but actually before that, I was taking a class on Audre Lorde and Nia performed, she danced to a poem that I did out loud. So yeah, yeah it just, it, I guess it was just meant to be. Yeah, and then about after four years of being together, yeah. we started. Mm, about three, I think. Three, yeah, yeah, 2016. Three, okay, yeah. three years of us being together, we decided to take this professionally yeah. and mm -hmm. only work with each other yeah. and start creating and performing and touring our own our own personal works yeah I definitely think our art has brought us a lot closer yeah um 
I mean, we need each other. Mm -hmm. And I think we see that with everything that we experience outside in the world, like it does, it brings us together. And then this also, so it's cyclical, like our art brings us together, but then also our relationship definitely feeds our art. Yeah, it's all, it's all one thing. Yeah. There's no separation (laughs) between our art and our relationship. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) I think about two things. One is like, it must be hard sometimes, but maybe the fact that you just accept that it's hard and bring it into everything that you do makes it easier. Yeah. yeah you're not shy it. about any aspect it feels, you know, like you're just going to be fully honest in each realm of what you're doing, whether it's personal, personal as a, as a relationship in, in, I don't know, the, 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 the boundaries of everything just seem to Oh, yeah, there really aren't any boundaries. And yeah. it's not difficult working together. No. It's difficult performing each other's pain. Mm-hmm. Like, it's one thing when you're sharing your own pain, but then when you are embodying the person you love more than the air that we breathe, when you're embodying the pain that they went through, it's a whole nother thing. Because you don't want people that you love to hurt. You don't want to see them in pain. You don't want to. You don't want them to experience that. So whenever, I know for me, when I am telling this story through my body, it's even more difficult sometimes than doing my own. Yeah, and I feel like my passion comes out more when I'm telling your story mm. than when I'm telling mine. Mm. Yeah. Man. And then, and then I'm also just thinking about, because when we were first started working together, you both were in the same frame. And um, I think it was Mia's idea to mm-hmm. say, could you have an Android phone? Could you put Live Lab on another phone and then have these two, two, different, two different frames? And I feel like that sort of opened up the piece in a different way to make it really about some, some individual journeys. Mm. Um, and I'm wondering what that experience was like for you. And I also wonder what it was like for you watching at home, if it was a surprise when the hands went through the frames and they, they are in the same space after all. Yeah, for, for us at first, it was like really difficult because we're so used to being together yeah. all the time. Yeah. Like we're usually always like touching and yeah. we're just there together all the time. So I think too, it was helpful with the feedback from Mia when she was saying that we can still connect. Yeah. Cause at first we were like, oh no, like yeah, we're well, both who's be- the connection. Yeah. That's what people always yeah. say about our work. They're like, oh, your connection is so amazing. That's really what people are attached to or attracted to. Yeah. And so we were still able to do that. And it was awesome yeah. kind of having this like this secret that like only like yeah. we felt like felt like we knew that we were in the same room yeah. mm-hmm. but y'all at home didn't know so yeah. it was really cool being able to like have this like secret love affair happening yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean I just picture I I don't know why I have the image but I just really see you performing like rock stars in a stadium <laughs> And I mean, that's a goal. That would be Put awesome. that out there, yes. manifest yes. that. Yes. Thank you. And I can, that. you know, if you both were on opposite sides of the football field or whatever the, whatever it is, you know, there's no distance. I mean, I guess it's, it's, you're still in the same room, so you feel it, but yeah, yeah. it's strong. It's cool. I hope it transmits. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so good to have you all back in our in our circle and I hope it comes back around soon. Yes, definitely. Thank you for having us. It's a joy. (laughs) All right, thanks y'all. Bye. So Nia and Ness are our last performers for the evening and that's it for us tonight for Downtown Variety Take 7. I just wanna shout out a couple of people. Um, We have original music by John King, who was on the very first edition of Downtown Variety performing. Um, And he sent us new music this week, so we hope you enjoy it. And we're very grateful that John is a close friend and collaborator. Um, Apparently there's a block party happening at seven on some day somewhere. And, you know, this piece of artwork I got in the basement at La Mama one day when Jeff Weiss was uh, visiting with his partner, Carlos Martinez. Um, So this is Carlos's work and it is Jeff's birthday today. So happy birthday, Jeff. Um, I also wanted to say that Nick Demopoulos with the homemade 
guitar. Um, we met through La Mama Meetup, so we want to meet you and know you. Um, and it feels so good to have an audience in this moment, and I'm so grateful to be able to share these performances with you. It's really, yeah, it's really something that we're going through together here. So I'm glad that it's with you. So we'll be back next week for take eight. Um, thank you so much for being here. I'm Maddie Barber-Bockelman, and I will see you soon.